Great. So, looking at tension force really quickly tonight. Tension force is essentially any force applied through a rope or a cable. All right. So whether we're you know pulling a train, um, lifting a submarine out of the water, um, rock climbing any of those places where we are applying the force in some way through a rope or a cable, we have tension force at play. Um, tension force can only pull on objects. You will never have a situation where this person um, behind the uh, boat is pushing the boat forward through the rope. Um, in this case, the force of tension or the tension force in the rope is pulling the person along. Same thing here. Um, tension in that cable um, is allowing this guy to get a workout. We're going to make two key assumptions, just making it easier to solve these questions. Tension is the same throughout the whole rope or cable, and that the rope or cable has a negligible mass. Things become more complicated if we you know, go with reality that the rope or cable does have mass um, and that the tension is not the same throughout. Um, anyways, we're going to make those two assumptions. All right. So imagine we've got these two carts on wheels connected by a massless rope. We're assuming there's no um, tension in the wheels or axles or um, anything else. Um, and so the only forces that work in this situation are the little tug of war that we've got right here. So the question we got to ask ourselves is how would we determine the tension in the ropes? Well, we first need to find the entire, the, sorry, the acceleration of the entire system. Um, and so we can kind of look at this and say, hmm, 700 newtons to the right, 300 to the left. I think it's going to move to the right. Um, now, when we draw this force diagram, rope is not is part of the system, and the tension in the rope is not included as a force because it is not an external force. So in this case here, the net force is F1 plus F2, um, which means the mass times the acceleration of the system is going to be negative 300 plus 700. Acceleration is going to be that negative 300 plus 700 divided by 40. And at this point, we realize it's probably a made-up question because the math just works out super nicely. Um, in this case here, though, again, um, we're saying that right is positive, left is negative. Again, our negative here, so that's where the negative 300 comes from. Um, we're using that to help us determine direction. Um, it's not that this left side is intrinsically negative or something like that. That's just the way it works. All right. So now we know the acceleration of the entire system. All right. So our entire system is accelerating ooh, 10 meters per second squared to the right. All right. What that's going to allow us to do is now look at the net force on each of the carts and when we narrow the system down to the individual cart um, we get to choose one of the carts to be our system and then the tension force is acting is an external force to that system acting upon it so we're going to choose to start with M1, which is the 15 kilogram mass. We really can choose both of them, and in fact, we're going to. Um, so work through this one in red. Um, the net force, again, is going to be F1 plus tension force. Now, again, right is positive, left is negative. Um, in this case here, though, um, we have this 15 kilogram mass um, being resisted, essentially, with this um, F1. And then it is the tension force that's pulling it along. Now we know that the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. Um, 
problem. So that's going to help us with the F net. That has to do with the net force on this object. Um, and in this case, though, we want to find the tension force. Um, so, right, net force is going to be acceleration times the mass, or mass times acceleration, so 15 times 10, that's going to be right down here we get to this. Um, however, mathematically, we always are going to say that the net force is equal to the sum of the forces on the system. So in this case, it's going to be F1 plus the tension force. Um, we want to find this one, the tension force, which means then we're going to rearrange to solve for that, and it's going to be F net minus F1 will give us the tension force. Um, well, tension force then is mass times acceleration, that's F net minus F1. And so it's going to be 15 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. It will give us 150 newtons. Now, minus negative 300. Um, and now back to our grade 7 integer addition or, and subtraction. Minus a negative becomes plus a positive, And we are left with 450 newtons of tension force. Right? And we look back at this and go, yeah, that makes sense. If we have 450 newtons pulling this thing to the right, it will actually move to the right. Um, so we're in good shape. Now, we could have done the same thing, and you can look through this over here, right? Where the tension force here is again going to be F net minus F2, right? Starting, given, of course, that it's gone one step up, right? F net. equals F T plus F2, right? I'm going to subtract F2 from both sides to get FT by itself. That takes me down to here, right? And at that point, I'm just subbing things in again, right? Mass times acceleration of the system. This time, the system we're talking about is a mass of 25 kilograms. Acceleration is still the same. Um, and so the tension force here is going to be um, the <clears throat> mass times the acceleration of the whole system, the net force, minus 700. And in this case, the 700 is a positive number, so we're just subtracting. So we have 250 newtons minus 700 newtons, which means the tension force is 450 newtons, which you can see is exactly the same. It's in the same row. And it's, you can see the negative here, which means in on um, this particular card, the tension force is going this direction, right? Um, on this card over here, the tension force is moving in this direction, pulling it along. In this particular one, it is resisting motion. Also, our tension force is smaller than the 700 newtons, which means Indeed, yes, the cart and, in fact, the whole system does move to the right. All right. Moving along, then. Pulley problems. Um, pulleys make life more exciting because they can redirect the tension force. And in this case, we no longer have a rigid system. It can change shape. Um, so we've got an M1 and an M2. Assuming everything is frictionless, it does not matter what the mass difference between M1 and M2 is going to be. Um, M1 is going to cause M2 to accelerate. Now, if there's a huge difference, and M1 is, you know, like one gram, and this is a thousand grams, um, the rate of acceleration is going to be really tiny. Um, you know, or if this is one gram and this is a thousand kilograms. Tiny, tiny, tiny rate of acceleration. Um, but assuming, again, no friction and perfectly level surface, it will cause it to move eventually. Um, it will be very slow, though. All right. So we can draw a force diagram here. Um, and then looking at the direction of the acceleration. Well, the force diagram is quite simple, in fact. Because there's no friction, right? There's no resistive force on M2. Uh, we're going to ignore air resistance, so we don't have to worry about resistive force on air one, uh, on M1 as it falls. So the only force acting on this sixth, 
the system externally is going to be the force of gravity pulling m1 down which will then cause the entire system to accelerate well m2 is going to accelerate to the right and m1 is going to accelerate downwards i guess at some point m2 runs into the pulley or falls off the table and um, at that point our force diagram becomes pointless but at this point right now this is what we've got all right, so we ignore tension because it's an internal force. Uh, we ignore any vertical forces on M2 because they're balanced. Right? There is going to be weight pulling down, normal force pushing it up. We don't need to worry about that. Again, those forces are balanced. All right, um, and so we call, we talk, we sometimes will talk here about Fg1. Um, it just be the force of gravity acting on mass one, which means it's going to be mass one times the gravitational field strength. Um, we can also rotate this up, right? So we can make it look like it is a 1D, like a rigid equivalent system. Um, oops. All right, so this is what we would end up like. Everything is accelerating, in this case, towards the quote-unquote right. Um, and we would say, well, the net force acting on it um, is going to cause the acceleration. Net force is equal to this M1G. All right. And the mass that it's acting on is the mass of the entire system, so M1 plus M2. And so we could figure out acceleration of the whole system looking at the net force on the system divided by the sum of the masses. All right. Okay, we can have this kind of a pulley as well. Um, and here we're saying M1 is greater than M2, which means M1 is going to go down, M2 is going to go up. Um, we ignore tension, again, because it's an internal force when we're looking at the whole system. Um, and in this case here, We've got Fg1 pulling it down, Fg2 resisting that motion, so it's going to move up while Fg1 moves down. Um, but again, it's going to resist the motion. And it, this should make sense that the closer F, sorry, M1 and M2 are to the same, the smaller the acceleration is going to be. Um, we can rotate this so it becomes equivalent to a 1D system. And if we look here, our net force is going to be F1 plus F2, right? So F1 was this one here, M1G. F2 is M2G. Um, we are saying that M or that F2 is a negative force, um, and that's just because it is resisting the motion, all right? Um, often we're going to say acceleration. Um, positive, sorry, when we use our um, numbers here, positive is going to refer to the direction of the acceleration. All right, so in this case here, though, we don't have numbers for the F2, so we're not going to find it separately and then make it negative. I'm just going to put the negative in here. Now, we could look at this and say, oh, wait, I can find the greatest common factor on the top and make it look like this. Um, the nice thing about doing this is it sort of shows us what's going on. That in the case of a pulley, um, where the pulley um, has just come on, two masses like this on a single pulley, um, the way that the acceleration is going to work is going to be we find is going to be the gravitational field strength multiplied by the difference between the two masses, so heavier. Um, minus lighter, divided by the sum of the two masses. So, two ways that acceleration can become very small. Number one, if M1 and M2 are just about the same, means the number on the top is going to be really close to the same. The other way we get um, the acceleration to be pretty small is if both M1 and M2 are very big. The bigger they are, the larger the number on the bottom, which means when we're dividing, it becomes um, a smaller number. Right. 
So let's do one of these with actual numbers. All right, so M1 here is uh, 800 grams, M2 is 500 grams. Remember, we've got to change this into yikes, kilograms. My computer is being silly. So 0 0.800 kilograms. And this one's going to be 0 0.500 kilograms. And we want to find the magnitude of the acceleration. And even if all we needed is the tension in the string, we still have to find the acceleration anyways. Oops, slow down. All right, so in terms of the acceleration, we know it's going to be moving down this way. Um, and it's going to be Fg1 plus Fg2, or M1g plus negative M2g over M1 plus M2. We substitute all of our numbers in. Oh, sorry, I factored it here again. It just makes this simpler. Um, and it's going to be, now I'm putting the negative in here only because I know that M1 is going to move downwards. Um, this negative at this point here is not doing very much work. Um, this negative is just showing me what I already know. So it is in a, it is in a sense the negative with, that goes with the G. Um, is a little bit superfluous. I don't need to use it. Um, I got in the habit of using it, and so I used it here. Anyways, um, we work out all the math, right? So we take the 0 0.800 minus 0 0.500, multiplied by 9.81, um, and then divide by 0 0.8 plus 0 0.5, so divided by 1.3. We end up with an acceleration for the entire system of now I say negative 2.26 meters per second. That is going to be down and, you know, to the right is my acceleration. And there's the rate of acceleration. All right. What about the tension? Well, in this case here, we have taken this same diagram, rotated it up. And now we can look at either M1 or M2. Okay, I just worked it out for M1. Again, here we are saying that the acceleration is 2.26 meters per second squared. And now, instead of that negative that we came up with before, I'm saying, well, the right is going to be positive, the left is going to be negative. Um, and so now we've got the net force is the sum of the forces on the system, so Ft plus Fg1. So Ft then is going to be F net minus Fg1. Um, Ft is going to be the mass times the acceleration of the system, um, minus Mg. Mg. So in this case here, we've got M1 um, is was our 0 0.800 kilograms times the acceleration times this um, minus 0 0.8 times 9.81. We end up with negative 6.04, um, and that negative 6.04 is going to be this resistive force trying to work to stop this thing from moving. Right. And that's the force of tension. Because in this case, we say it's the force of tension is trying to stop it from moving. If we look back at our pulley, maybe, um, the tension in this string or cable is because M2 is being pulled downwards on this side by the gravitational force. Um, which means it's pulling upwards over here. Now, it does not pull upwards hard enough to you know, win the tug of war and have everything come down on the left side. But it does pull up hard enough um, that it creates tension in the rope. Right. Takes us to the end. Have fun.